Hello, the Astro Flower family. Uh, welcome to uh, this video, which is going to be about what happens energetically at the end of our life, uh, the what happens after death, um, and we're going to go into a little bit of about what is life and why are we here with this. I'm just giving my points of view, my understanding in regards to sort of how energy works and stuff like that, but it's gonna be, um, you know, sort of like an open-ended book in a way, so we can sort of like discover and uh, maybe look at things in a different light, help us, each of us individually, to um, understand what life is all about, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's get straight into it. I've, um, I've been doing energy healing for a very long time and um, there has been certain cases where I've helped people to pass over from this world to the next. Um, I will state here and now, um, although I am a great believer in the creator and spirit and so forth, I have no affiliation with any organized religion. Uh, I gradually created my own sort of connection, as it were. Uh, so I thought I'd put that out there straight away. So this is not, these ideas are not really like built on upon a belief system and so forth. This is much more um, how it works energetically and what the after the life is all about and stuff like that. So when we're coming to the end of our time here on this planet, and uh, we're coming to the end of this life, as it were. And we're all going to get there, <laughs> regardless. We're all going to get there and uh, should never really sort of forget that idea. Um, my personal journey is when I was 22 years old, I had an accident and I had this sort of near-death experience, uh, which opened the door on a lot of things in my life. I'd already pushed a lot of doors open, to be honest. Um, but it opened a lot of doors, a lot of understanding, uh, very simple understanding as well uh, about life. And uh, that's brought me today to do this sort of video here because it's not quite what we think. And uh, to understand that, we just have to understand a little bit about sort of energy, how the body physically works, and the reason why we're here as well. Um, and why would you know what life is all about so at the end of our existence upon this plane energetically speaking what happens is is our energy gradually sort of sort of collapses in on itself in a way it's sort of like it's a nicely origami um, way of folding our chakras into one point, which is our point of connection to everything, which is just behind the sternum. And uh, with that sort of connection, um, each chakras sort of gradually sort of collect as they go to, as they go down from the crown chakra and come up from the root chakra, until we get to this point where our magnetic field, our aura is so concentrated into one spot that we can actually leave our bodies. Now, if you look at history and like um, as many cultures that sort of talk about weighing the soul or weighing in the Egyptian culture, they used to like talk about weighing your heart. And in, you know, so uh, see how much uh, weight we have upon our heart. Uh, if you look at modern day science, we know that the body loses a certain degree of weight, physical weight, the moment we pass over. And this is this electrical tension that we keep within our energies that we use every single day, which we use to collect, store, um, and then obviously download all our experiences upon this planet. And this gives us this idea of when things are collecting down into one point, it gives us that notion of, um, you know, my life, um, my life went out, you know, my life sort of, uh, 
you know, I saw my life in front of my whole life in front of my eyes. I've forgotten the phrase now. In French, it's a défilé uh, devant mes yeux, uh, in front of my eyes. It's, and, and you get this sort of sensation there. I've got to say, when I had my near-death experience, I didn't get that. And that's probably why it turned into an only into a near-death experience sort of scenario. Because a spirit came to me and sort of said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, down below there, it's not working anymore, I'm off. And the spirit said to me, no, 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 you've just started your work, you've got to get back down there. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll go back down into my body. So I didn't have that sort of like, um, you know, seeing, seeing our life, my life before my own eyes in the matter of seconds. But there is this case of when we get crossover, when we, when our body, when our energy sort of collapses, as it were, into this one connection, this one sphere of energy, it's a very light ball of energy. It can leave the body and it can follow the energy pathways uh, in order to make that connection uh, to the higher planes or to the next plane, as it were. Um, and from my understanding here, our guides, which I will go into on another video on how our guide systems is set up. Our guides come down, disconnect from their position. They come down, they greet us and they start turning around us. Well, this is the sensation I got. They, they turn around me. They were turning around me and they turn so fast, it turns into a bright light. And it's, that's what creates like the tunnel of light that we follow and go down, as far as I can tell. And it's, I would like it to being a, a very short tube of light. And that tube of light gets so intense above our head, so as we're looking up above, it's as if we're heading towards the light. And if we look down below, I could see sort of vaguely what was going on from the scene that I was leaving. And then we get to a place which I can only call like a, a place of witness. It's a place that is completely white. Um, there is no colors. That, or, or for me, there was no colors. There was no depth. So you couldn't see any distance. You couldn't see any, you had no perception of, of space as it were. Everything was just white. And um, obviously I realized quite quickly where I was and I was okay with that. I was quite, I was okay. It, I was fine. And the funny thing is, is that one of the things I really noticed that it sparked a massive thing within me is that, and this helped me to understand a lot in my healing as well, there is no emotions on the other side. In an, an emotion is very much a physical thing. Yes, it can produce mental uh, euphoria and also energetic states, there is no doubt about it. But primarily, emotions can only be had within the physical body. So once you leave that physical body, it's difficult to have emotions. You can't really have them. So love doesn't really exist but then neither does sorrow, hate, joy, excitement. It just, everything seems to be at peace and at one, that nothing can disturb that eternal peace that is within you. And to, in order to see our lives and to bear witness to our lives, we need to be in a place of peace. I didn't really get that much of a chance, as I said earlier on, because um, I was asked to go back down. <laughs> so, um, as I went back down, you know, as I went back down, I didn't actually go through a major review of my life. I almost went through the review of my life, like life flashing before my own eyes. That's what the phrase is I was looking for earlier on. Uh, 
came when I was coming back down into my body. Um, and it made me realize a lot of things about things that I might have thought, said or done or didn't do in life that I wasn't too happy about. Uh, and that is my, you know, that's your own personal judgment um, that you do upon yourself. You're not here to judge other people. To bear, you're just there to bear witness. Um, and as you make this sort of, as I made this sort of clear judgment and came back into my body, every day was a fresh start. Every day was a brand new day. Every day was a possibility of learning something, doing something wrong. And I always used to sort of like spend five, ten minutes at the end of the day just seeing what I'd done correctly or what I perceived to be had done correctly and what I hadn't done correctly so I can constantly clean my karmic path as I'm going so I don't have to do major sort of cleanups on my karmic path. It's incredibly liberating. Incredibly liberating. But you understand a lot more about life, about what is life for. Uh, and it also helps me to understand what I should be doing here. Now, this may sound bizarre, but the most extravagant lives are not necessarily the most fulfilling lives, I can guarantee you. It's not being a pop star or uh, being a, you know, a, a spiritual leader or, you know, being massive that actually carries the biggest weight. Because a lot of the experiences attached to those sort of scenarios are preordained in a way. It's getting out there and enjoying life. So I've done many things in life, many jobs. I, you know, when I came over to France, I couldn't really speak French, and I had a friend of mine who was a, um, uh, like a sheep shearer and a, and, a, and, a, and a shepherd. And I used to help him by collecting the sheep and bringing the sheep over for the sheep shearer. And I you know, getting cash in hand sort of jobs. And it's, you may think it's not the most spiritual of paths, but when we get to a certain age later on in life, probably the sort of thing we love doing <laughs> and that's the thing about life you know the simple things are the most gratifying experiences that we can have and this um, this is what life is all about life is about experience it's what we take away from us we don't take anything physically away with us we take the experience away from us and as we take the experience away from us we, that's what we can contribute to the Akashic library so when we finish this life, we discharge our, our experiences into the Akashic Library. So then anybody at any time who wishes to understand something can then go to the library and say, I want to learn about sheep shearing. And maybe my experience of collecting sheep will come up and they'll sort of observe what I was doing, kind of going, oh, right, it helps them to understand. And that's what it's all about. There is no good and bad at all. As I said afterwards, there's no emotions. You can be honest with yourself and say, yeah, that was a, um, that was a very, um, I, I wanna say traumatic experience, but I don't think it's a case of that. I think it's more sort of like, that was a hard, fulfilling life experience. And, I always say to people that, you know, to understand a lie, to understand, say, like, if your karmic mission is to understand persecution, to have, you know, you must have led a life where you had been persecuted. But at the same time, you must have led a life where you were the persecutor. And if you had been persecuted and you are the persecutor, and also the observer of people being persecuted without saying anything, and being the observer of being the person who does say something. Multitudes of different lives where you can understand persecution. If that's the case, if I was to put my heart in that weighing thing which I was talking about the Egyptians, you know, I think my heart would be in balance. Regardless of if, 
if I had lived a life of being someone who persecuted people. And it doesn't make that okay. It should be a case of where we should have learned. Collectively, individually and collectively, we should have been able to learn that persecuting people is not a good idea. And we're at that stage now. And that's what makes things a little bit complicated for what of am I supposed to be doing on this planet? And many people struggle with that question at the moment. Before it was very simple. I should be, I am born to a farmer, I should be a farmer. I am, you know, I am uh, in the olden days, the wife of this um, person here, therefore I am a housewife, you know, that sort of thing. And it's, it was very well defined before, but now it's become all a little bit blurred. And that's the same thing that we find when I'm doing healing, when I'm looking at people's karmic blocks, uh, their karma that they've carried on through entire, you know, through various lifetimes. And um, I haven't seen a old version of the karma that is working. Everyone has finished their karma. We are now volunteers for this transition that we're going from one dimension to another. And that's why technology has developed as it has over the past few years to coincide with this spiritual awakening that we're going through. And it's coinciding with also pole shift, solar cycles, energies of the earth, various different species upon the earth. It's all coming together at the moment in one big party. And it should be fun. So this volunteer and most people, and I guarantee you, 80, 90, 95, maybe even 100% of people watching this video may only be volunteers. The younger generation have a different type of karma. It's like an upgrade. And that's what we're gradually moving into. It's a transition as we go into that age of Aquarius as well. It's all about forgiveness for the humanity. And understanding the process of life and death after death and reborn, I think is really important. So there is no sort of wrong and right when it comes to all of this, it's an experience. And now as volunteers, we are here to help the understanding come to the surface. And that may be as simple as working in a, in a, in a, in a cafe, in a cake shop, I'd, lo I'd love to work in a cafe, in a cake shop. Seriously, I'm really looking forward to getting a cafe. It'd be the greatest thing in the world. You don't have to do things that are extraordinary. The things that are extraordinary is you living your life. That is the most important thing. You do not want to get to the end and sort of saying, I didn't live, oh my word. Yeah, there's going to be people out there that's going to try and, you know, make cause life difficult for you and maybe cause pain for you emotionally, you know, but you will recognize them and you can also, you know, circumnavigate them or even sort of as you go past sort of saying, oh, don't worry, relax, enjoy life, my friend. Much more than sort of get into the creation rather than destru destruction. But whatever it is, it's an important process that we are all helping towards the culmination of the Arkashic Library into a finality as it were and into a complete understanding of the consciousness so do not worry too much about your pathway per se I would be more concerned about engaging in life and actually doing what you should be doing There'll be more blogs on this, on this channel here. Um, we're going to be talking about it. Hopefully we're going to be doing a live so you can ask questions and so forth. Um, and then we can go into a lot more depth and understanding because the understanding is between all of us. And once we engage in this conversation, it, we're going to be able to understand a lot easier. I will see you for your readings and etc. Thanking you very much for the support that you give this channel. Very much appreciated. I will see you soon in the meantime. 
don't forget, life should be fun, so please do enjoy.